The Department of Energy has provided radioisotope power systems for use on NASA missions for over four decades. These missions have enabled exploration of every planet in the solar system except for Mercury. And in 2015, the first mission to Pluto will be powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. The Multi-Mission Radioisotope Thermoelectric Generator, or MMRTG for short, is a nuclear power system which converts the natural decay heat of plutonium-238 into electricity. RTGs went with the astronauts to the moon during the Apollo program. And just recently, it was announced that Voyager has entered interstellar space. Cassini has been producing science since it arrived at Saturn in 2004. Curiosity has been working beyond expectations on Gale Crater on Mars. And the next potential rover to Mars, the Mars 2020 mission, could also be powered by an MMRTG. The MMRTG is about two feet tall and two feet wide. It generates about 110 watts of electricity at launch and has an operational lifetime of at least 14 years. The MMRTG uses thermocouples. Thermocouples are a device which converts heat into electricity. Thermocouples are extremely reliable. Over the last several decades, there have been numerous RTGs which have been built and they've totaled over a billion hours of operating lifetime. During that time, not a single thermocouple has failed. We build safety from the inside out and the outside in on all of our power systems, and the MMRTG is no exception. We begin with the fuel itself, where we use plutonium-238. Plutonium-238 is an alpha emitter. Alpha particles can be very easily shielded. Your dead skin or even a sheet of paper is enough to protect you against alpha radiation. It's only a hazard to the human body if it's inhaled or if it's ingested. To help prevent that, we place the fuel in an oxide form, so we make plutonium-238 dioxide. This is a ceramic material. And just like the ceramics that you have in your kitchen, they tend to break into large size pieces, not small fine pieces which can be inhaled or ingested. But because they're also ceramic, they're non-soluble. So if you were to ingest this material, it would quickly leave your body through natural means. Surrounding the plutonium fuel is a material called iridium. Iridium at these operating temperatures is very strong and very ductile. It bends, but it does not break and we choose this exotic material because we want to protect that fuel and prevent it from getting out in the unlikely event of an accident. Iridium also has a very high melting point and it has good material compatibility with the other materials found in the GPHS module. Two fuel clads are placed inside a graphite impact shell. The graphite impact shell is made out of a material called fine weave pierce fabric. Surrounding each graphite impact shell is a carbon bonded carbon fiber sleeve and this is used to protect the fuel against the heat of launch area fires or the heat of re-entry. Two of these graphite impact shells surrounded by the insulating material are placed inside the GPHS module. The module is also made out of a carbon-carbon material and it's there to protect the fuel in the event of a re-entry scenario and also the physical impacts against the ground. Over the last 30 years, we've engaged in an aggressive testing campaign to prove the safety of these devices. We've shot them with aluminum and titanium bullets. We've put them in explosive overpressure chambers. We've subjected them to rocket fires, and we've smacked them into the ground, and every time they behaved exactly as designed. But even with all the safety testing, we still take nothing for granted. Before the launch of every RTG, we set up a team of experts to respond in the case of a launch vehicle accident. This team of responders is made up by experts from the Department of Energy, NASA, the Air Force, State of Florida, and Brevard County, who are all there in place to respond in the unlikely event of a launch vehicle accident. And if the Mars 2020 mission selects a multi-mission radioisotope thermoelectric generator to power its rover in 2020, the Department of Energy will be happy to continue its long partnership with NASA in producing power systems for groundbreaking scientific missions.